with Onyx or Epex. Inspect the circuits after they are stapled to make sure no tubes have been punctured and that the staple tolerances are correct. Pressure test all the zones as described previously before you proceed. With every underfloor radiant project, insulation is a must. Install foil-faced fiberglass bat insulation with the foil facing the tubing. Make sure there's a two inch air gap to help direct the warmth up to the floor. At the ends of the joists, cut a small section of insulation and push it up against the perimeter. When a foil-faced fiberglass is not available, you can staple up an aluminized bubble insulation in the joist space. Then secure fiberglass bat insulation below this layer, but make sure you have a two inch air gap directly below the tubing. The best way to build a radiant floor over a plywood deck is the new Subray Radiant Subfloor. Today we'll look at model 862, which stands for tubes eight inches on center with six inch sleepers and two inch radiant channels. The 862 system works for either 3 8 inch Epex or 3 8 inch Onyx and half inch Epex. First, check your Radiant Works printout to confirm the type of tubing and number of circuits required for the zone. You'll need Radiant tubing, header sticks, grippers if you use PEX tubing, two inch aluminized tape, and rolls of aluminum conduction layers. You may also need four foot sections of galvanized steel seat covers. We also recommend precision cut cabinet grade Baltic birch sleepers from Watts Radiant. In our first example, we'll begin work on a frame floor with an unfinished room below, where we will locate our manifolds. The 862 installation will be covered with 3 quarter inch hardwood flooring, so the radiant channels will run perpendicular to the hardwood strips. Begin by laying out a perimeter band of sleepers around the room. Secure the header sticks over the manifold location. On the opposite wall, secure another row of header sticks and join them with sleepers. Space the sleepers in the middle of the room with a two inch spacer block. At the end of each header stick, secure a sleeper and work your way across the room in this manner. When the wooden sleepers and headers are completed, Drill two three-quarter inch holes in the radiant channel above your manifold location. Use a saw to form a two inch long groove and then remove debris with a vacuum or broom. Next, secure two inch wide aluminized tape in each channel. A tape gun makes this step go faster. Locate your Epex unwinder and feed enough tube to reach the manifold through the groove you cut. Then clamp a gripper over the tube and secure it with a screw in the hole provided. Pull off Epex and lay it in the radiant channel until you reach the next header stick. Use a screwdriver to pop up the removable header plate. Pull the slack out of the Epex in the radiant channel. Then push the tube into the hole groove. Line up the header plate and then snap it in place with a rubber hammer or step on it. Put a screw into the pre-drilled hole to secure the header plate. Use this same procedure to work your way across the room, filling the radiant channels with tube. When you need to install a second circuit, run one end of the tube into the groove and then start the second circuit from the groove in the next radiant channel. When the wood and tube are installed, roll out strips of perforated radiant conduction sheets perpendicular to the radiant channels. Leave a half inch gap between each sheet and then secure them to the sleepers. Use these gaps or the openings in the aluminum cover to locate the tube so you don't damage it installing the next flooring layer. When installing 3 8 inch onyx, you don't need to secure the header plate because onyx stays put without it. When your manifold is located above the floor, make a space in your perimeter band for the tube. Our goal is to run the tube to the far end of the room and then begin our layout. Lay down sleepers to form a two inch radiant channel along the wall. On the other side of this sleeper, lay out a header stick and then locate another header stick on the opposite wall. Fill in the floor with sleepers 
and complete the 862 subfloor as in the previous example. Before you install your hardwood strips, place a seat cover in the first radiant channel so the hardwood strips are supported. The seat cover will deflect nails, so remember to glue the hardwood strips where they meet over the seat cover. Seat covers are also useful to cover the entire floor when you want to install finished flooring directly over the 862 without raising your overall floor height. The finished 862 floor height is less than 5 eighths of an inch when you use 3 eighths inch ID EPEX and less than 3 quarters of an inch when you use either half inch EPEX or 3 eighths inch onyx. Read your 862 manual for more details. Before you cover onyx or epex with a subfloor or finished floor, conduct a 24-hour pressure test as described before. You can install onyx in a thin slab, and in our first example, we are working over an existing slab. First, check your Radiant Works zone report, and then pull off the circuits of onyx from the winder. Make a temporary connection to the manifolds. After making sure the floor is clean, lay out the onyx in each zone with a double serpentine pattern as shown in our radiant slab example. Use a heavy hammer to secure the tube with a plastic clip or hold it in place with a dab of construction adhesive. Be sure to pressurize the circuits during the pour. Cover the tops of the tubes with enough masonry to meet the manufacturer's requirements. Don't circulate hot water through the tubes until the masonry has cured according to the manufacturer's recommendations. Next, let's install onyx in a thin slab over plywood. Manifolds are generally installed in a wall cavity with an access panel. Other good locations include the back of a closet, under a cabinet, or in a vanity. Manifold boxes complete with an access door are also a popular option. Remember to double plate the interior walls and plan for the weight of one and a half inch depth of masonry when sizing your flooring members. Thoroughly clean the plywood subfloor and check your Radiant Works zone and assumption report. Then unwind all the onyx and double back, making a loop with the circuit. Temporarily secure one end of the onyx near the supply manifold. Lay out the loop of onyx in a single serpentine pattern by starting at the outer edge first and working toward the center of the zone. You can also temporarily secure nails to the subfloor and pull off loops of onyx to fill the area with loops on 8-inch centers in a single serpentine pattern. This is another good place to use the extension arm on the staple gun. Staple the onyx to the subfloor every 8 inches or so. Keep the tubing at least six inches from the edge of the room. This will allow space for interior walls. Epex in a thin slab installs in a single serpentine pattern. Place a coil of epex on the unwinder and temporarily secure one end near the manifold. Use the pex head on the staple gun and the extension arm to secure the tubing every eight to 12 inches. Go to within six inches of the perimeter and work back to the manifold or toward the center of the zone. If banding is required, make sure the EPEX does not exceed its proper bend radius. If your tubing is damaged during installation, follow the instructions in the field repair kits. The connections for a PEX splice and an onyx splice are the same as described for manifolds earlier in this video. When you complete your splice, Test your work by pressurizing the circuit and spraying soapy water on the connection. I hope you've really enjoyed this video, but remember, your successful radiant installation starts with Radiant Works. You've got to have a good heat loss, design, and equipment list. So take your Radiant Works report to the job site with you. Be sure to follow all local building codes and keep in mind, this video can't take the place of product sheets, manuals, and personal design advice.